It was very difficult to write an environmental policy for Lush. And part of the reason was because so many things had been there from the beginning. And some of them, as Lush grew, fell away and had to be resurrected. Lush is so organic that we thought that something that got too many rules or too many laws and would stop the flexibility for the company. Some of the things that came from the beginning were things like packaging. So from the very early start, Lush has been selling products that require no packaging. This is a, a big part of the company. About 70% of the products we sell require no packaging and about half can be taken home with absolutely no packaging. We really want to encourage customers to bring their own bags, bring their own tins, Tupperwares, so they can take the products naked. The other thing we've been working with recently is improving the packaging that we do use. So we started using recycled pots and bottles. That's been going on for a few years, paper bags. And now we have furoshiki and the knot wrap. So using fabric as a way of wrapping presents and reusable fabric. So again, getting that idea to the customer of reusing things, bringing it back. Um, we ask customers to bring five pots back because they can't be recycled everywhere and those pots get turned into new packaging and then we sell that packaging to the shop. Energy, just using energy at the factory and in the shops is also a big part of our, of our ecological footprint. In the shops, we've been working with new lighting and we've just opened the first all-LED lighting shop in Bournemouth and it only uses 10% of the energy used for lighting a normal shop. In the factory, we've been doing things like installing biomass boilers, also LED lighting, voltage optimization, making our processes more efficient, buying better equipment, putting more controls. And we have this commitment of reducing our energy use by 5% year on year. Waste and recycling, also very important. We spend a lot of time finding the best recycling schemes for the shops and the factory. In the factory, last year we recycled over 200 tons of cardboard, 100 tons of organic waste and 70 tons of plastic. Very little going to landfill. We have this target of recycling 85% of all of our waste by 2010 and we are on target. We also work to actually reduce the amount of waste we're producing. So working with reusable transit packaging, reusing things like cardboard boxes in the factory and encouraging also staff not to create waste. Another big deal for Lush was transport. So as a global business, transport has quite a big impact. So we have been working on reducing our air freight and we're down to less than 5%. So we committed to that target of keeping air freight down to 5% of the weight. We've also been working with other countries to reduce their air freight. Uh, we've done amazingly well with Japan and North America. And a big, big policy change for us that took some time to develop was putting a ban on domestic flights in the UK. So that saved about 122 return journeys a year. For the flights that we do take, we pay 50 pounds to a pot and we call it carbon tax because we think the government's not taxing aviation as it should. So we kind of tax ourselves and then we take that money and we use to fund transport and climate change groups mostly. Communications is also quite important. So talking to our customers through campaigns, shop windows, green parties in the shops, and just having trained staff who can actually discuss environmental issues with customers. We also have a Lush TV and a website where we communicate these issues. And really this idea of using all of the passion that we have in the business and turning that into action so we become more sustainable the more we grow.